Welcome everyone. This is 12th of December, 2022. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. Thanks for attending. Today's items that I have on the agenda include news, action items, elections, governance board meeting time and date, CDF outreach reboot, CDF topics. I don't expect Oleg to attend today, so I'm uh, hesitant to have, oh, Oleg's here, great. So CDF topics and community forum. Any other topics that should be on the agenda today? Yeah, I sent one update uh, to the governing board, but it's of the record. Uh, so I definitely don't contribute it to the agenda today. Um, okay. Yeah, so sorry uh, that I have to do, uh, miss another meeting, but hopefully next time I will join uh, for real. No problem, Oleg. So are you okay if we drop the CDF topics item from the agenda for today? For today, it's perfectly fine. Uh, well, uh, uh, there are no that big updates uh, right now. So one thing that uh, Jenkins Project is still invited to present at the QC meeting. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will uh, circle back once we have clarity. And yeah, what's important and what's public uh, that uh, yeah, step down from the uh, QC chair position. Uh, so it's just a quick update. Uh, yeah, it's rather due to personal reasons, plus due to different expectations of, of what this position constitutes. Uh, but I will uh, remain on the TOC per se. So regarding the TOC representation, nothing changes. Okay, great. And you'll you continue then to represent the Jenkins project uh, on the TOC. Well, uh, to some extent, and uh, you, Mark, uh, you also uh, participate in these meetings quite regularly. Right. So I do not see any practical difference between you and me in this regards. <laughs> And yeah, you're definitely much more involved in Jenkins than me in the moment. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Oleg. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda today before we start the before we start working through the agenda? Okay, then let's then let's go ahead. So first item was the news, uh, 2.375 was released uh, two weeks ago. It looks good, positive feedback from lots of places. There's some, some active discussion about, um, oh dear, about breadcrumbs. Breadcrumb and uh, that discussion is happening in the context of weekly, but I think it will be a likely candidate for a backport into 2.375.2 in early in early January. Uh, January 2023, and I forget which day it is. I think it's 11. Any comments on those items? Okay, next one then is our action item. So first action item, Alex had the action item to assess if we've got active members in as leaders of the, as managers or owners of all project SIG and community mailing lists. Alex, anything you want to report there? Yeah, I, best, I didn't add all of the information there. Basically, I was looking for a mailing list on the Jenkins IO website until I stumbled over the hardware and EDA SIG mailing list. And I figured out it has been banned by Google because someone posted malicious content and it has been basically unmoderated for a longer time. And then I took a quick glance over the other mailing lists, most likely language mailing lists or um, platform SIG or any other mailing lists that are not frequently used. They are all full of content that I would consider malicious, scam, and the typical stuff you have in your mails that directly went to the bin. But these mailing lists, given that they are public, you have the opportunity to report them to Google. And if a mailing list owner or manager does not respond within a few weeks, I don't know, Google reserves the right to get rid of the mailing list, at least for public view. And I don't think this is a great thing for the Jenkins project to have banned mailing lists or anything like that. So I came up with a proposal that 
mailing lists related to six or to officers are owned or at least managed by those people. So we have someone in charge who can possibly remove or moderate bad content rather than having it publicly accessible. Thank you. So, so is that how? Do, what do you see as the next steps? Then a, a a list of lists that says these lists should be deleted or erased, or what? What do you see as happening next? Yeah. Um. For example, the Jenkins user mailing list or the developer mailing lists are moderated by a few people, but there are like the EDA mailing lists and the language mailing lists are owned by very few people and not necessarily related to the project much anymore for example the chinese uh, language uh, the chinese mailing list is owned by rick yeah and not like and not by people who are actually much related to um officers and such things so my proposal was i would like to reach out for them and ask them at least the managers or owners if they could add the acting officer or at least an acting member who's related to the sick for example for the platform sick i know bruno is very involved in that one so we could at least add him there or people like that so we have at least a chance to act if bad things are posted or possibly change the posting rules have like preview them similar for the death mailing list. Good. Okay. And yeah, adjusting also... the posting rules to require moderation, at least moderation on first post seems really good to me. Yeah. I will also see who owns the hardware and EDA mailing list and possibly see if they can remove the harmful content or whatever Google flags as harmful and see if we can get this list unbanned, even if it's not much used these days, but that doesn't mean it should be banned, at least in my opinion. <laughs> well, so, and I would have no problem with that list being deleted and us just deleting references to it because it, it has been inactive for a very long time. So, all right, so either, go ahead, Uli. Wouldn't that be a, a better approach to say, uh, why do we need still mailing lists? So we have our community, we have our GitHub channels. So I really don't need any mailing lists anymore. This is an yeah, old concept. And we have one for the user interface uh, design group, but actually we are not using it. So maybe it's easier to delete them and use some modern concepts. Yeah, and I think archive is probably healthier than delete, yeah. but yeah, but we've got an action already that that Kevin actually has carried on, has has taken from me to archive the uh, doc sig mailing list and switch to using community. So I think uh, that feels like a good a sensible approach. Alex, would that work for you? Okay. Yeah, first I will need to see who actually owns these mailing lists, but. At a quick glance, Kosuke or Oleg, and I think Oliver owns the majority of them. So basically, people we can easily reach out to. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else on on that topic? So the next step, next steps, then Alex, are continue those requests to them and ask that they grant someone from the grant an active maintainer permissions to the list? List owners. And then we archive them? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I would like to get rid of the harmful content and potential everything that is considered right. as off topic. And then we can like restrict content posting and say, put a topic there and say, hey, we now use community.jenkins or IO or anything else, depending which topic the list is about. Good. Okay. So require approval on first post, then archive them and use, makes sense. Okay.
did I capture it well enough there, Alex? Yeah, sounds good Great. to me. Okay, anything else on the mailing list topic? Next topic then, whoops, next topic, the election nominee and voter badges. So Alex, this is one you had noted as well. Uh, help yeah. me understand the badges. I, I apologize that I'm not sure what that that is. Is that a that's a concept on community.jenkins.io? Yeah, I think that was brought up by Gavin last year. At least I think it was him, maybe someone else. If then apologizes. Um, but yeah, on Discourse, you can add badges to profiles similar to the first post badge or the first mention badge. And I think the idea from last year was that we add everyone who is in the election 2021 group, a badge that says, hey, thanks for voting. So basically a form of appreciation for everyone who took part in the last year election. But I noticed that we didn't have those badges. So yeah, I would go ahead and apply them retroactively if you want to do that still. I, I'm open to open to discussion. I'm not terribly worried about it, but it would mean we would need to have somebody who has permission to create a new badge. Um, I think I've probably got, I Mark thinks he has permission to, to create those badges, but if not, I can certainly, I could work with Gavin to make it. So if, if that would be a, something that others think would be a helpful. Comments from others. Uli, any any opinion from you there? Yeah, I, I'm just uh, um, thinking about it. That would mean that everybody who takes part of an election will be yeah flagged in our community. I'm not sure if this is everybody wants. So you normally an uh, election is some kind of hidden who's participating, and now it's not hidden anymore. So I'm not sure if for me it is okay to see it, but I'm not sure if it's everybody is uh, feeling a good with when his name is marked as uh, I was part of the Jenkins election. But yeah, maybe it's an honor, an honor to be there, but I'm not sure if it's for everybody a good thing. So my, sure. my opinion is that if you're elected, you should get a badge. But if you were merely a voter or a nominee, that seems unnecessary. I can't yeah. see a strong reason for that. Yeah, that would be my opinion as well. So if someone is getting voted, that is a good thing and a thing which helps people. But if to be a voter is, yeah, I'm not sure. It's not so relevant. And it's a lot of effort to look at 221 to see if these people are still active. So I don't know. I like I like the idea of assigning a badge to officers and board members. That's a that's a group of less than 10. So it's that's a manageable mm -hmm. size. It's also a, a, a noteworthy thing. Alex, would that that meet your your question, your concern? If we if we said yes, let's go ahead with badges. Let's just do it for officers and board members. That way, on their profile, they can see. Oh yes, this person is an officer or a board member. No, yeah, that sounds great to me. Okay. Ah, my fingers. Okay. Come on. I've now done something to my page. Just a moment. Here we go. Okay. All right. So uh, how about Mark to create or create the badge or discuss with Gavin or request permission from Gavin? Now, Badge creation is distinct from board member create permission on community.jenkins.io, right? I believe every board member should have permission. And Alex, you have permissions. You're, are you noted currently as a board member there and have the correct permissions? Yeah. 
Okay, good. It says right. government um, board member under those people's great. profiles. Yeah. Okay. Is it on? Sorry, I don't see it on my page. I have a lot of badges, but I have a leader badge. I don't know what this is. Uh, okay, so so let's let's put a, an additional item that Mark to check that all board members are correctly noted on community.jenkins.io okay as members of the board that's a good that's a good thing yeah okay any other items there on the election badges so in this case it would just be for 2022 mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next topic then. Mark Wake create an empty agenda entry. This week's worked quite well for me. I'll do it again. I was that worked very, very well. Proposal right now is that the next meeting of the board won't be two weeks from now, but it would rather be four weeks from now. Because the next one, two weeks from now, will be the 26th of December, and many of us will be out of office between Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Uh, next was the action item to submit a Jenkins.io pull request to combine subprojects and SIGs. Haven't started that one yet, but I will. That one, is, I like that a lot. The concept will be working groups, and it'll be a, a structuring to have a single unified way of presenting those rather than the two distinct but strangely similar concepts of subprojects and special interest groups. Uh, next was Oleg to propose to Rick to retire the Chinese Jenkins site. No report from Oleg there. Next topic then, archive the governance meeting notes. Gavin and I have this action item not started yet. Uh, we do continue to publish the agenda after the meeting on community.jenkins.io. I think it would help us to have this. Now there is an open question from the infra team. Team asking where do we want that? Do we want that GitHub repository? That repository, whether on infra or on the Jenkins CI org, and Mark to include board members in that discussion. I'm not prepared today to have a more detailed discussion of it. Daniel Beck had some concerns about which repository it's in. Damien had some opinions. Uh, I'm open to any of them. I think we we would benefit from a GitHub repository. I don't care which org it's in. Yeah. It doesn't really matter where it is for me. Okay. All right. So I think I think before discussing it, it would be good to have a list of arguments for each position. Um, because I read through that thread, but um I think I saw some arguments in favor of one or the other that seemed valid to me, but a separate conversation I noticed in that thread was the more general conversation about what belongs in the Jenkins Infra organization. And that seemed like an interesting conversation to have, but also a separate one compared to the question of where do we want this particular repository to go? So. I think there's really two different topics here. One is how do we define the scope of Jenkins Infra more generally, which is always a difficult question, right? It's always difficult to draw the line between ops and dev in any organization. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we could we could spend you know days discussing that either in the Jenkins project or in any other organization. But I don't think we should get sidetracked with that discussion. Uh, with regard to this particular repository. So th th that's a much easier question to answer is where does this board repository go? A much harder question to answer is where do you draw the line between dev and ops? And so, so I think we should focus on the first question and not necessarily the second question, which is just very difficult to answer. Agreed. I like that. So we'll focus, let's focus that discussion on on specifically which of those two organization repositories we want. Um, 
there are there are yeah, let's leave it at that. There's there's even a Jenkins-docs.org, but I'd rather we keep it in Jenkins Info or Jenkins CI, one of those two. Good. Okay. So that one, I think the action item stays with me to bring the board members in. We'll discuss it in that thread in the GitHub repository and or in the GitHub. I think it was an issue that's been opened, and then we'll see, go from there. Okay. Next, anything else on the archive of the meeting notes? Okay, next was Kevin to use community.io, community.jenkins.io for the Jenkins doc sig mailing list. So this was Kevin taking an action item from, from me. Kevin, how are you doing on it? You want some help there? Yeah, yeah, I'm. Um, uh, I'm very interested in getting that switched over and utilizing the community site instead. Um, and I think, especially with the idea of uh, getting moving away from the mailing list, having that as kind of a litmus test will be really, really helpful in understanding uh, what possibilities we have there. So, um, I think we just need to go over it a little bit more, maybe get a better sense of uh, what the crucial items from ER, but we can do that in our own one-on-one -on -one separately. But um, yeah, that's something I definitely want to make sure that I'm taking care of within uh, the next month or so. Uh, I want to start the year off right as SOX officer. Great, thank you. Next topic then was easy CLA to be documented by Oleg. Uh, Oleg was dropped in with us briefly. He'll have to take some, he's taking some time off at the moment. Uh, we'll look forward to him addressing that as we get into the new year. And then last item, special thanks to Basel, the web application server policy. He created the proposed the pull request. It's been reviewed, merged, and here it is with three levels stating the current, the current pattern where level one is we run automated tests and we really fix things promptly um, in a timely manner. That's Windstone. Level two will consider patches for certain specific containers that are based on servlet API 4.0. And then level three unsupported is things outside of that. Basil, anything you wanted to highlight here? No, um, uh, if, there's, if there's any other uh, requests that we get for additional servlet containers beyond Tomcat or Wildfly, the response that we'd wanna give is, to add them to this page and also to add them to the test suite and the packaging repository. Um, I haven't heard any requests from people about others, but uh, that, that would be the response. For example, I don't know if Glassfish is still something that people use or not, but if it is, that's that's the way we would deal with it. Great, thank you. Yeah, so good, good to note that if someone wants to add to level two, add documentation and a, one or more test cases, one or more tests in the packaging repository. Thanks for crafting those, creating those tests. So those, those tests, if I understand correctly, are based on molecule and use Docker containers to do full installs. Yeah, they're, they're not exhaustive. They're basically just checking that it can boot up to the login screen, which is not a very, thorough test. I mean, we're not actually building a job or, or doing anything like that, but it's uh, basically the lowest level of testing that we could say, um, we could say that it at least could work if it gets to the login screen, so. Right, very good. Thank you. Anything else on the web application server policy? Okay, next topic then was on elections. So um, two weeks ago, we discussed a proposed change of rules to allow up to two elected board members from a single company. And that's being discussed in the Google group. Discussions have gone kind of quiet. Uli, any, any additional concerns from you or things that you wanted to bring to this meeting? Well, actually, uh, everything I think can, could think about it, uh, I wrote in the mailing thread. And the interesting thing is that really nobody took 
part at this discussion from the community or from the developers so yeah this indicates that our community is getting uh, smaller and smaller and yeah quite interesting that nobody responded from others which are not on the board right now when you or, say nobody are you counting the reply that i wrote two hours after you sent your message yeah yeah but you were in the meeting as well so oh i see so i, I thought as a, i think everybody who was part of the meeting two weeks ago wrote something but nobody else so this was a little bit disappointing from my perspective so i would have been better i think if we had a real discussion so we are still the same people talking about this thing so but yeah well, I maybe say it's a that. good sign if nobody is against it so so saying nothing means maybe yeah i'm fine with changing it but i'm not really sure well i do agree that it would be good to get more voices but you know that that doesn't really change the points that were made and the arguments in favor or against if if, if fewer people are discussing the topic but the arguments are still valid i would i wouldn't consider that a a problem yeah yeah i'm not sure how we can proceed if we should wait a little bit more because it, currently it's not really relevant because the next elections are in one year at least the official ones and so i'm not sure if we should give it a little bit longer i'm yeah, as, I, I would. So as a proposal, I think if we were to say at our next board meeting, and I'd be happy to post this to the discussion at our next board meeting early January, we plan to bring this to a conclusion to decide yay or nay. Um, okay. That way people know when we're going to make the decision. And I, I think it's within the board's ultimate authority to make this decision after it's been discussed and developed in the developer list. Yeah. What does that seem okay to you, Uli? Your comments? Yeah, that's fine. We conclude the discussion and vote on the proposal at next board meeting at mm -hmm. January 2023 board meeting. Mm -hmm. Anyone object to that? Okay, great. Thanks. Anything else on elections before we go on to the next topic? Okay, next topic then was governance board meeting time and date. I was a little sluggish here. Five minutes before this meeting was scheduled to start, I sent the Google the Doodle poll. It's a clickable link, so you can go right here to see it. Uh, well, maybe. Here we go. Yes. So, oh, we and we've got responses. Good. So please respond. Thanks, Basel, for responding and encourage others to respond, please. I've sent it. I've posted it on the board mailing list. Uh, I've sent email directly to individuals. I'm hesitant to put it on the developer list just because that's a little broader than usual, but I'm open to that if others feel strongly that we should poll for the whole developer list. Yeah, normally there are not so many different people here, so I think it's okay to keep the poll small, so we find a good, uh, yeah, slot which fits to at least five of us. So it's getting harder, I think, if we have a lot of different people from different time zones. So if right. they want to join, they can, or they can propose items without joining. So I think it's the best thing to keep it small from my opinion here great let's go with that then thank you anything else on governance board meeting okay cdf outreach reboot this is more for everyone's information uh two days from now Alyssa tong and i will be present at the meeting of the continuous delivery foundations outreach committee as they get it restarted uh, Alyssa, I believe, plans to present as the events officer, and we'll 
look forward to being involved with them more as we do more outreach and advocacy. CDF topics, I believe, has already been covered by what Oleg shared as he arrived earlier. Any other CDF topics that anyone wanted to bring? Okay, then last topic was community forum. So this is a highlights section. And one of the things, the one thing that was on my mind was this coming Sunday, December 18th, the Jenkins Artifact Repository will be down for up to six hours. Uh, that's while, Artif while JFrog does a migration to upgrade that server to, to a, a different location and a new version, et cetera. So what we'll do is we'll take the CI servers and to prepare for shutdown so that their jobs stop running. And then Artifactory will be taken offline you can read more about it on the Google group and for specific status at time of at time of the outage go to status.jenkins.io and this this thing announces that coming change any questions on that outage oh good point by kevin so should we do a blog post or is there a blog post oh there is a blog post kevin i think is what you're telling me here very yes, good. Sorry, uh, Damien actually created that blog post and I published it uh, toward the end of last week. So that's actually uh, up and available on the Jenkins.io blog as well. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so we're we're giving ourselves as many ways to to forewarn people that will be down this coming Sunday. We're very grateful to JFrog for what they do for the Jenkins project. Any other items from the community forum that people would like to share or highlight? Okay, any other topics that we need to cover in today's in today's meeting? Um, one thing, uh, I think on the mailing list, we are participating in FOSTEM next year. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, it's just good to say that we are or uh, we have a stand there, I think. But actually, I was not involved while I think Alyssa was involved about the creation process. So, Correct. Yeah. So good, good point. Advocacy and outreach um, is tracking that stand. There will be a CI slash CD dev room at FOSDEM, whereas last year, I believe it was a full day. This time it will, I believe, be only a half day. Um, but, and as far as I understand it, the talks that were, that were proposals for that, the, the call for proposals has already closed. So, so we'll look forward to hearing from people and their experiences in that dev room. Okay. Now, staffing for the the stand, um, Ad, Alyssa will coordinate that. I believe she and Bruno are coordinating it, but Alyssa Tong is coordinating the the staff. If you're going to be at FOSDEM, by all means, we'd love to have your help staffing the table. Thanks for the reminder, Uli. Any other? Maybe you can uh, write the date. It's, I think, the 4th and 5th of February. Thanks, okay. yes. Good. We'll also, we also plan to participate at the Southern California Linux Expo. Uh, that'll be 20X, and I think that's in March. So that'll be in Los Angeles, California. We've done that for many, many years, and frequently we get Kosuke himself to come visit the booth. Any other topics for, from the community forums?
All right. I think that covers our topics for today then. Thanks very much. Recording should be available on community.jenkins.io within about 24 hours. Okay.